Welcome to product. Let's get started. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, Martim, thanks so much for just taking the time to talk to me a little bit about your piece. Oh, thanks for having me. Yeah. So, um, I guess I would love to just hear a little bit about how this piece came about. It's called Hassle Free Packaging. Is that right? Yep. And um, yeah, just how it came about, what the inspiration for it was, um, if if you wrote it for yourself or for someone else, and how that happened. Yeah, sure. Um, this piece originally was a section of a larger piece called Add to Cart, which was actually um, this multimedia uh, theater musical experience that I put together with um, Alex Dupuy and Kate Bergstrom and Todd Anderson at Brown back in 2017. Um, and there was an unboxing section within that piece, but the piece was just about sort of the cycle of incessantly buying things on Amazon and having them delivered to your house and being dissatisfied with the purchases. Um, so then the unboxing kind of took on a life of its own. Um, and that same year, 2017, I was participating in a um, program, I think it's the Splice Institute. There's also a festival, but I was part of Splice Institute out in Michigan and they pair composers up with performers and they paired me up with Adam Bedixis, who is a percussionist out there. Um, and so I decided to take the unboxing section of Add to Cart and turn it into its own thing for Adam to play. Um, so that's how that piece got initially premiered. And yeah, and then since then, it's um, sort of just become its own thing. So, so actually speaking of the score though, what does, can you talk a little bit more about what that looks like and how you notated it? And maybe also just how much you've left up to the performer versus how much is written down? Mm-hmm, sure. Um, do, I, I don't know if Jacob's going to want to like put in like a little image yeah, of the he score here. Yeah, he could probably do that. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, so the score has two different components to it. The first part of the score looks like a UPS shipping label, and you tape it to the outside of the box. So when you walk out on stage with the box, there's the shipping label on it, and it has um, the first you know minute or so of the piece is written on that score. And then once you get inside the box, there's a quick install guide that you open up. So that's just like a folded piece of paper that is mostly graphic notation. Um, it has some cues as to what's happening in the electronics and what you should be doing when the electronics are doing this, like how your sounds are going to be processed. Um, it tells you what you can pull out of the box and use at a given moment in the piece. So you have your sort of options for instruments. Yeah, and it has some choreographic instructions as well. Um, okay. There are some um, voice parts in the electronics that are kind of chopped up from unboxing videos on YouTube. Um, there's this one YouTuber in particular that um, has a big following and uh, has been an influence for how I think of the structure and choreography <laughs> of these videos. And so he's in there. Um, and then the electronics are, you know, partly instrumental, partly um, live processing. So there's two microphones that are going to be sort of facing the table and the objects that Piero is playing. Um, and at different points in the piece, the sound that is coming off of those instruments is going through the electronics, um, going through like a delay or like a grain delay or, you know, different um, effects that are then uh, coming out in conjunction with the tape part or the sort of fixed media part. Yeah, that's neat. And I think it's, um... It's also kind of neat to think about um, not being able to tell the difference between what's what's uh, fixed, what's live, what's um, happening from the performer, and yeah, that's kind of neat. Yeah, I mean that's kind of how the YouTube videos that I watch are. They're, they're so mediated, you have no idea like what's <laughs> real, like what's edited later. Yeah. Well, I, mean, I do like the idea of combining performance practices and the vocabulary or gestures that you develop as a performer with a specific instrument. And then, yeah, combining that with the gestures that we use on the computer's cursor or the keyboard or things you do on these other interfaces. Um, 
So I guess that's kind of consistent in my output. And then more generally, I'm interested in consumerism and, you know, uh, the kinds of performance that you might see on the web, specifically YouTube or social media, and how those um, performances on platforms like um, yeah, like YouTube tie into the consumerism aspect of things of, of Amazon.com or targeted advertising, um, and so this you know performance becomes more of a question of who are you performing for and. Like, who are you performing as the person that's making the unboxing video? Um, and I guess tying back into the add to cart piece that I spoke about also, um, the idea of the unboxing being the actual product or the thing that's interesting about the item. Because once you open it, the, the excitement's kind of gone. Like, who cares once it's there? The whole fun of it is ordering and waiting and then once it shows up there's this exciting build up to it um and then after that like you know it's uh might as well return it um so i don't know yeah that that whole cycle really fascinates me and i have a background in marketing as well so um i have <laughs> a little bit of a inside scoop on on these things and it continues to to fascinate me yeah it might just be interesting to hear a little bit about um how this pandemic has played into your life and um, just to to hear kind of your current status and, and what it's been like over the last year for you. Oh, sure. Um, well, as far as this piece, I think it's taken on new relevance because most performances you see now happen online. And the fact that this is, it was originally a live performed version of an online performance and now it's gone back into the online world so it's double mediated somehow um but uh so that's been really fun to think about this piece in this current moment every time someone plays this piece i'm kind of blown away because it's so different from the way i would play it in a good way yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah.